guys, you know I only trust Barbell Apparel for my clothing. And this is the perfect time for you to get some of your own. With their Memorial Day sale going on from May 23rd to June 6th, their athletic fit jeans and chinos fit my body like no other brand. Because they are made by athletes for athletes. And for a limited time, you can get any pair of pants for just $99. Barbell's apparel is stylish and functional. The comfort and fit of their gear is unmatched. At Barbell Apparel, satisfaction guarantee isn't just talk. It is a promise. These guys live what they preach, and they want you to do hard things in your gear. If you break it, they'll replace it. Not only that, but if you gain or lose weight while chasing your fitness goals, they will swap you out for another size. No one else is going to do that. Barbell's mission is to help you power your fitness goals and to break boundaries. If any issues arise, they have got you covered with repairs or replacements with their unconditional lifetime guarantee. That's why I trust Barbell Apparel for everything I wear. Take advantage of this deal and go to barbellapparel.com or just click on the link below. Bo Nickel at 185 pounds. Where does he fit? What should he do? What kind of movement and or lack of movement have we seen since 300? Maybe let's just do a bow update. Let's just do a bow update because Sean Strickland is in such a great spot. And he earned it the hardest way. I mean, you want to talk about a hard way to get somewhere or what you deserve? Because your ranking says, well... Not all rankings are created the same. Not all championships are created the same. Not all deserve buttons can be activated the same. Like, Sean Strickland, for where he is, had to fight Alex Piera. Would you? Think about that. Think about how daunting and challenging of a task that was. Was it high pain? Was it the main event? Not to mention the time that Sean did it. Sean was the highest ranked guy willing to fight Pierre. Point being, if Sean beat him, he would not have gotten credit. People didn't know how good Pierre was. If Sean beat him, he doesn't advance up the card. He's fighting a guy lower ranked. I mean, but think about the risk in that standpoint. And think about going five rounds on ESPN in a main event spot with Jared Kennedy. Does that sound like fun to you? Is it something you would do? Think about fighting Kamar Usman. With no title, no pay-per-view, and people don't even know Kamar is Kamar, let alone that Sean is Sean at 170 pounds. Would you do that? If you did your best work at 185, would you go down to 170? I'm just saying, like, there's a lot in it, right? Would you fight Israel Adesanya? Would you fight him for 25 minutes? Would you fight him on short notice? Would you fight him in his home country? Would you fight him on short notice in his home country as a massive underdog? By the way, could you beat him? Could you beat him every round? Could you lose no minutes to him? And these are all things that Sean did to get him to the position that he's in now. Then you drop the belt in a rushed two match, which many people believe was the wrong call. One of the licensed judges assigned to that card and giving his licensed status from the government thought you won. So now you have a level of controversy. And you have a massive event coming up known as 300 that's got an open spot. Then wouldn't that be perfect for you to get your rematch? But it doesn't happen. As a matter of fact, it doesn't happen at 300. It doesn't get scheduled to happen at all. As a matter of fact, that guy that many people thought you beat, who now has the belt that was once yours, is actually going to be matched up with that other guy we referenced a while ago from Australia who you beat for five straight rounds. Those two guys... who have six judges, four of them said, you got the best of, they're going to go fight, and it doesn't involve you. And I'm not quite done yet. They're going to stick you in a co-main event spot against a guy that the fans call the Terminator, and I'm not quite done. 
I'm going to make it 70% longer than a non-title co-main event should be. So I don't want you to think I didn't do what you wanted. I want you to know really clearly I'm doing the opposite, the precise opposite of any request you have. I mean, think about that spot. I want you to just, just really think about it. And when you end up in that position, okay, I don't see anybody at 185 that can challenge Sean. I don't believe that Sean is going to get in front of Adesanya. I believe we're going to see Duplicy, Duplicy versus Adesanya. I believe they've already agreed. Like, you have a guy who's haven't been announced that, right? There, there's not an official announcement. It's just rumor. Do I have that? I don't think I have that wrong. I think we even know, and it's going to be Perth and all these things, but I don't think there's an official announcement. And I don't know that Sean's fight with Paulo Costa was a number one contenders match. I mean, just for example, I know it won't get stated as that. I, I, it definitely won't get stated, nor will Sean be given that opportunity even after Izzy prior to Whitaker and Shamaya fighting. You, you would demote a fight if you were to make that announcement or that proclamation. You want to at least keep the belief in it. You want to keep that alive, right? You want to keep motivation. You want to keep those things out there. And Whitaker, Chemayev, boy, they certainly will have their chance to have their say. Chemayev has already been named number one contender once. So we can't make believe that he can't make that happen again or that that deal is already in place, which frankly would make sense and would be a piece of information that we would not have. So either way, it brings you back to is Strickland's next fight for the title. And that doesn't mean it's the next title fight Strickland's. It means it's Strickland's next fight for the title. And if you come to the conclusion of no, who then do you believe takes that from him? Who do you believe takes that opportunity from him? And they don't have to be out there yet, right? Like it doesn't have to be the cannoneers of the world just yet. It doesn't have to be Arnold Allen just yet. Like, you still have Chemayev coming up. And then what's the bureaucracy look like on that? The media on Chemayev ha ha has cooled in ways unlike anything I've seen. But whatever goes up must come down, right? And Chemayev is still red hot. He's going into a main event feature match. He's red hot. I'm just sharing the media has greatly cooled. Greatly. And... Does Chemayev roll right into that? And some of the bureaucracy and some of the rules and some of the visa and passport and travel issues aren't even true. That is most definitely a possibility. And even if they are true, can Chemayev still get that spot and opportunity? Like, if you were to do this with heart and your heart bleeds for Sean Strickland because he should have been given due uh, plus C, I wouldn't disagree with you. But when due plus C came in and took that spot, it was supposed to be Chemayev's just to remind you. Jemayev worked so hard and hit a guy so that he broke his hand and was healing. So there's enough heart. If you're going to do it with heart, it goes around. But the topic of this piece wasn't Sean. The topic of this piece is Bo. I have not heard from Bo Nickel in a meaningful way since he took on Cody Gumbridge. Cody, huh? Got you. Gumbridge. Easy name for me to say. Haven't seen or heard from him since 300. And Bo was a little bit down on himself. I, I don't know why. Dana White even said as much. I have the foggiest idea why. He won the fight. He dominated the fight. He even got a stoppage within the fight. But he wanted to do it sooner and faster within the fight. I, I you know, it's, it's one of these things. But the, but the greats hold themselves to these really high standards. And I, and I reference that for you because it's a reason you haven't heard from Bo. And he's not out there. And he's not calling people out. He, in his own mind, was a letdown. Doesn't feel he has the right. Doesn't feel he has the right to go out there and be boisterous. You're going to have a hard time getting Bo Nickel the fight with Sean Strickland. I do get that. I'm speaking to the argument. How can you tell me, if I'm Bo Nickel, how can you possibly tell me I'm not next? I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. How? And you're going to have to turn to one of the most flawed things in our sport, which is the rankings. And I'm glad they exist, by the way. But when I call them flawed, they were put in specifically for controversy. Anytime you have people judging other people, it's not fair. 
which was the entire point. It's something to talk about. So when you're going to say that rankings don't matter, Bo's going to remind you, well, I'm undefeated. If you want to talk about numbers, let's talk about numbers because I'm undefeated. You're, you're aware that there's percentages. You've heard of a sport called baseball. Okay. Are you my equivalent to an RBI? Are you aware? It's absolutely perfect. In fact, let's talk about numbers. Let's talk about how many times I went into the third round. None. Never even been there. Every fight won. Every fight inside a regulation. Every fight. Stoppage. And then you're going to get the rebuttal, which is there's no such thing. That RBI reference, why'd you bring it up? In your undefeatedness and never went three rounds, what category do I put that in that ever gets put on television? You can't have a title fight. You can't have the fight with Sean Strickland. You can't even be in the hunt and or in the conversation. You say, all right, fair enough. Hey, I, I actually get it and I follow the sport long enough. Give me, give me Paulo Costa. I said, well, how can I give you Paulo Costa? You go, well, I'll fight him because he's ranked. Go, well, Paulo Costa's coming off of two losses and you've never been beaten before. And that's where Bo turns the gun on you and says, okay, so all of a sudden my record does matter. So being undefeated isn't good enough to get me a fight, but being undefeated is good enough to not get me a fight. Because there's also other guys within the top 10 who not only are coming off of a loss, they're coming off of multiple. So let me fight one of them. There's only a few boxes and a few things you ever have to check on a commission sheet. You guys have never seen one. They're not held from you. They're, they're very public. You just have never seen one. And on every commission, all 50 in America, you have to put the result of your last fight. Did you win? Did you lose? How'd you win? And how'd you lose? Why do you have to put it down? And why does it go there? Well, they're going to juxtapose it. They're going to juxtapose it with your opponent. If you're coming off a knockout loss and he's coming off a knockout win, they may have question. So it's an extremely relevant point that I'm pointing out for you. If Bo would like to fight one of these guys in the top 10 and you say he can't because he's not ranked and he comes back and tells you, I got other numbers, such as the fact that I'm undefeated and all of a sudden I do qualify, you find yourself in a bit of a position. And it's one argument or the other. It's, it's a game. The whole thing is silly. This whole thing with the ranked guys to not fight Bo is just to find a way to not have to fight Bo. So it's just something you say, and you can hang your hat on it unless the person across from you can say something more powerful. So which would you rather be? Higher ranked or undefeated? Which would you rather be? Ranked number seven in the world? Or you're so good, you've never even been to a third round? Which would you rather be? Which would you rather your child be? Which kind of guy would you rather face? And it becomes a very interesting spot. And where is Bo and what is Bo going to do? I think there's a lot of very interesting matchups and positions for Bo, who's always the main card and always the feature match, and he's coming off a win. In the world of promotion, he's got to move forward on top of that. And I could see Bo re very realistically finally taken on one of those ranked guys, and I could see it as far as a co-main event.